We're delighted in the studio with us, though, here in Manchester, is the Tories London mayoral candidate, Susan Hall. Susan, extraordinary. Uh, everybody thought it was a pushover. Easy for Sadiq Khan. He's been in two terms. Yep. Two points yep. ahead of you in the latest poll. Is that down to your huge personality and vision, <laughs> or is it down to his hated expansion of the ultra-low emission zone? Oh, I think there's lots of reasons for this. It, I mean, obviously, the expansion zone is a disaster because he didn't listen to what anybody wanted. He never listens to what anybody wants. He does exactly what he thinks he'll do. But I've said all along I will stop it on day one, which I will. But people are also very, very concerned about policing in London. I mean, we've seen some tragic instances just in the last couple of couple yeah. of days, really. And, you know, he has got to get a grip. But if not, I will absolutely get a grip. And those that know me know policing is my absolute passion. And I'm very concerned about things that go on in London, and we need to put it right. It's, it's a brutal um, bear pit that you've thrown yourself into. Yep. And we're seeing all sorts of left-wing press in particular going yes. after you. Yep. I would argue, in a way, that they don't necessarily go after male candidates, and I don't mind saying that. Why, Susan? Why do you want to do this? Why is it important to you? Because I, I've been born and bred in London. I love London, genuinely. And I have seen it deteriorate under Sadiq Khan over the last seven years. And somebody's got to get in there and make a difference with common sense policies. And somebody's got to go in there and say what they think. Now, there'll always be media storms the minute you say what you think. Well, mm. I was going to say, what you think sometimes gets you into trouble, because yes. you've got into trouble now. Or you're, well, I'll ask you about it. You said it here yesterday. I know how frightened some of the Jewish community is because of the divide of attitude of Sadiq Khan. What do you mean? Well, I, I'm just going back to policing. The way the, the policing is in London, so many Jewish people do not feel safe. Mm. That's wrong, and I will never apologise for defending the Jewish community. I've got so many friends that are literally talking of leaving the country because they don't feel safe. That is unacceptable in what, London. Jewish people? Yes, yes. Leaving the country? Yes, going to Israel. I mean, it's, it shouldn't be in that state. Since Sadiq Khan has taken over, um, uh, uh, these sort of attacks have, have doubled, literally doubled. I think there's been uh, over a thousand or around about a thousand so far this year. Attacks um, on Jewish men and women? Uh, yes, that's right. Physical attacks or, or verbal? Or? Uh, recorded attacks. I okay. don't have the list sure. of them. But that's not good enough. So I, I will look after all different communities. He is in charge of the police. He should make sure our streets are safer. Are you getting the support you should have? This is an inhuman Hugely important election next year. If you win, it will be a massive blow to Keir Starmer and the Labour Party. Yes, it will. But here we are at this conference. We've got Steve Bartley speaking at the main conference platform. They've not given you a speaking role on the main platform. Why? Andrew, do you know what? All the media are asking me. That it really genuinely doesn't bother me. I'm not that. I'm not the sort of person that bothers about state. Yeah, but I've, I want to talk to Londoners. That would give me a platform for the whole of the country. I want to talk to Londoners. And never am I more happy than I'm listening to Londoners, hearing what they say, and talking to events where there are Londoners, which is what I've been doing. But do you think the Conservatives just that, well, we aren't going to win the election, so we're not putting the resources behind it? Like, are you able to get funding easily for your I've, campaign? I've got some uh, very generous donors uh, that are beginning to come on board, and I'm very, very very grateful to them. But I shall make sure I spend their money very, very wisely. But I'm very lucky with the, I will if a donor gives me money, they give it to me just straight. It was no strings attached, nothing. It's so important to me that everything is transparent, and it will be. And that's unusual, because there will be people, there have been over the many uh, in politics, who want to get somewhere, they will take the money to help them, because there might be a little reward at some point in the future, especially as London Mayor, with the power you'd have in our capital city. How easy is it to turn down those sorts of offers? I wouldn't go near it. As e it's, it couldn't be easier. I, I will not be swayed by that. I'll be swayed what Londoners think and what Londoners want, like Sadiq Khan should have looked at the ULO's expansion and thought, no, you know, Londoners don't want this. They really don't want this. Yeah. 
uh, but he won't listen. I will listen to what Londoners want. You can never please all the people all of the time. We know that because people have got different views. But you have to listen. I was, I was talking to a taxi driver yesterday, and as we know, the taxi drivers in this country are the font of all knowledge. There is nothing that they don't have an nothing opinion on. Know. And always when I get into a taxi now, they're complaining about roadworks, oh, particularly in London. Yep. And they say some days it isn't worth me coming to work oh, no. because I can't do the mileage to yep to make it worth me taking my car out on the road. What would you do about the state right. of our roads? Okay, there's, there's quite a few issues here. First of all, 20 mile an hour zones on places like the Finchley Road, utter nonsense. Utter nonsense, that's another this thing. This is a main road. It, it, sorry, yes, London. for your view. It's, yeah. uh, it's, a, it's a main road into London, so three or four lanes. I mean, ludicrous. Around schools and around hospitals and little side roads, I completely get. Yeah. But not on main archery roads, yeah. so the, the taxi drivers are complaining about that. But but also, if you look at LTNs, low traffic neighbourhoods, they're great for the people that live there, except because you couldn't get a taxi to take you home or whatever. Yeah. But it's just causing backlog for the rest, all the rest of the streets. And because when you get idling cars, that's not good for pollution either. It's also absolutely gridlocking all our roads. You look at Park Lane um, in the middle of London, you've got um, a bicycle lane been put on one side of it, just literally next to a bike lane in the park next door. Is virtue signalling a game from Sadiq yeah. Khan? He'd have us all out of cars. I'm so pleased with the government's attitude now to LCNs, to these ridiculous 20 mile an hour zones. We've got to put some common sense back, and that's what Londoners want. Let's, let's go back to what Beth was talking about earlier about the attacks on you. So yeah. you're, you're limiting, you're, going, you're less on social media now than you used to be. Is that because you're getting so many poisonous attacks on you? Oh, poisonous attacks. I mean, t to be honest, I'm, I've got used to that over the years. No, I think that the problem is you've got people are forensically looking at everything I do and assuming very often completely incorrect things. So I'm, I'm going to be careful. I mean, when you're not in the public eyes this you can like things and without any consequences at all and i mean those of us that are serial tweeters know that you you'll flick through your phone you'll look at it and you'll press like like yeah, like yeah, like yeah. like without real yeah you know so without are you gonna, are you gonna have, is that an admission that you perhaps did some you, you've said some things on social media or like things I, that perhaps you shouldn't have I, I i probably like things that people have misconstrued why i like them right yes yeah. absolutely and we all know that and of course if you're labor you'll make the most of that so i've, I've absolutely given the position i'm in now will not be doing that it's again. so difficult isn't it because you would i saw you talking the other night and you accidentally said when i'm labor mayor right oh, was, yeah. are you, you, you i think you went to say the word leader and you yes, said labor yeah. and so you I know. No, that, no. that's human. Those things no. happen. I know. But when you when you come off a stage and, and you've made a, a, a gaff like that, we do them regularly on this show. He never knows what time it is. He always says it's 11:20 when it's 10:20. Oh. You know, these things happen, especially when you're in, in in a public space and you and you're talking. So I guess what you're saying is people are taking that too serious. They, they, they're jumping on those. Of they are. Yes. To, to illustrate yeah. you as something that you're not. Yes. They want they want to put me in a special box and say, look. She's this, she's that. Well, I will fight back because at the end of the day, we should have free speech. People shouldn't assume they know what I meant because very often they get that wrong. Sometimes it suits them. Politically, it definitely suits them. Well, I'm, I'm not having it. I will carry on as I am and I will speak what I consider to be my feelings and the truth. And, and well said. Down and when you it. do what can Mr. Deacon do? Are you going to fly all around the world at our expense, public expense? lecturing us about climate change which no. I a bit, you're not going to do <laughs> no, that no I am not so I mean how not? ridiculous is that oh I'm just flying around the world to tell you 440,000 miles oh, yes, that's including, right. including taking all his team to Argentina I know, to talk about climate I know. change and cannabis factories as well would I be going abroad selling London Blooming right, I would. It's the best city in the world. We need more um, visitors. We need more investment. Yes, I would be. But I would not be lecturing people on climate change when I'd been driving a car to the airport or I'd been flying in the air. Of course not. So you know, the election's on May the 2nd next year. Yep. What do you need to do, Susan, between now and then to push that lead to, to the front? 
talk to the really good people of London, explain that I am on their side, I am for common sense policies, and actually I want to start talking for the majority. We always talk about smaller groups, and of course smaller groups should be looked after. But as a, as a member of the public years ago, without any connection to this, I used to think, well, hang on a minute, what about the majority of us? Who is standing up for the majority? Yeah. And can I ask you just one final question? When you go campaigning, one of the best campaigners I've ever seen on the road is Boris Johnson, who was yep. a very successful mayor yep. of London. Will you take? Will you? Will you go out on the road with him during he's, the campaign? He's, he's already said he'll help me. Anybody that cares about London and cares about us winning for common sense, so looking big, after people. You were a people. fan of Boris, weren't you? Absolutely, yes. I wish he had a sort of a stardust quality. When you walked into a room, everybody knew he was there. It's 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 something he has that I, anybody who is a politician would yeah. love it. And you know, we saw had it yesterday, Nigel Farage. He came in here, it was like a rock star. Really? Yeah. Do you mm. like him? Uh, I, I, some I'm things, to trick you. No, no, I know you're not. No. Uh, some of the things he said I've agreed with. I mean, I'm a Brexiteer. Yeah. Um, uh, he's said things in the past that I haven't agreed with. But listen, nobody agrees with everybody yeah. all of the time. Certainly people don't agree with me all the time. But I ho just hope they agree with me sufficiently to vote for me on May the 2nd. Right. Brilliant. Thank you, Susan. Susan Hall. You're going to come and see us again soon, I hope. And what, oh, we yes, need, what we need in political life are more strong matriarchs, in my opinion. And you come <laughs> under that category for me, Thank Susan. You. So good luck with it.